I remember one time he's like, you know how much puss I get now that I have one arm? And I was like, how much? He goes, a little. <laughs> but that's still pretty good. Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. When you think about it, work is all about counting. You count the minutes until lunch. You count the hours until you can clock out. You count the days until the weekend. And then come Sunday, you're not even at work. You're still counting. 12 hours till Monday morning. Six hours till Monday morning. Two hours! We count the weeks until holidays, the months until vacation, the years until retirement. If you play your cards right. Welcome aboard. Anybody else gonna die on me today? He was the winner of Roast Battle right here on Comedy Central. Give it up for Mark Lawrence! I really, uh, you know, miss my grandma. We lost her in 2001 and she died in 2006. <laughs> And she was a very special woman to me. You know, they always say this about old people, they don't make them like they used to. And the reality is, they do not make them like they used to with Lottie Stein, my grandma. And not just because no one's named their child Lottie Stein since the Prohibition era. Uh, <laughs> the Lottie factory shut down when the Ethel and Gladys factories caught fire nearby. <laughs> and no new Lotties have been made in a long time. <laughs> And uh, she, was, she was awesome. She was uh, gruff, really mean. Uh, my nickname was, you pussy. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you wanna know how unloving my grandma could be, both of her children got into stand-up comedy and so did one of her grandsons. Uh, <laughs> and the toughest thing was somewhere in, in my teens, she, uh, she got Alzheimer's. And, and Alzheimer's is, is rough. Alzheimer's is a lot like The Simpsons. They're still there, but you have to choose when to let go. <laughs> and, and everyone, uh, does anyone here have a relative with Alzheimer's? <laughs> that is the sound of one hand clapping. <laughs> it's a weird participation. <laughs> But no, it's, it's tough because everyone, you, choo you choose that moment that they're no longer fighting. And I remember it was, uh, you know, as she got worse, even the retirement homes got worse. Like she started off at Vista View. Then she was in Century Village where living has no limits, but there was an ambulance every day. And, <laughs> and then when it got really bad, she was at a place called The Preserve. Because <laughs> irony ends at 70. And she was starting to forget us and, and stuff. And we figured the one thing that would bring her back was my, my dad, her uh, ex-son-in-law, who she always hated. Her nickname for my dad was Chuck the Fat Fuck. That's how she would say it. <laughs> there he is, Chuck the Fat Fuck. And me and my brother brought him in. We're like, oh man, we're gonna patch Adam some fucking memory back into her. <laughs> This is gonna be awesome. We're gonna get a classic CFF shout out. And then she looks at my dad and my dad's like, eh? And she just goes, you look nice. Did you lose weight? And we were like, no! <laughs> he was 20 pounds heavier. Because uh, it took me a long time to, you know, accept it. And if there's one, one sentence I can use to describe my life, my act, everything about me, it is the inability to let go. I still like and eat the same things I did when I was six years old. My favorite position in bed is still fetal. It's the <laughs> only one I've mastered. I was in a relationship for five and a half years. We never had sex once. I was totally cool with it. Uh, I'm from the state of Florida, a place that looked at progress and change and said, we're good. Uh, <laughs> a place that only exists so that Texas can sleep comfortably at night. Uh, a place that uh, its flag should just be an Ed Hardy t-shirt staple. <laughs> to a dirtier Ed Hardy t-shirt. 
And even the uh, awful first job I had, I should have left, and, and I never did for a long time. And that was, uh, I worked at a fast food restaurant for seven and a half years because when you love life, life loves you back. <laughs> now, I can't legally say the name of the fast food restaurant I worked at, but I was never loving it. Uh, can't say the name of the fast food restaurant I worked at, but it rhymes with Dick Monalds. Uh, can't say the name of the fast food restaurant I worked at, but if you think your boss was a clown, mine actually was one. <laughs> and I worked there, I started May 16th, 1999, three days before Phantom Menace came out. <laughs> Uh, and I ended December 28th, 2006. I started at $5.25 an hour. I ended at $6.45 an hour after five raises, two of which I earned, and three of which were government mandated during the <laughs> Bush administration. <laughs> or as we call it, the calm before the storm. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I work drive through because I've always had this face. And... You may not recognize me now, but possibly this rings a bell. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of crazy people I worked with, I worked with a guy named uh, Stumpy who had one arm. <laughs> it's less sad because he named himself that. <laughs> but I remember one time he's like, you know how much puss I get now that I have one arm? And I was like, how much? He goes, a little. <laughs> but that's still pretty good. And my manager was named uh, Pete. Uh, he was weird, he was very Christian. He used to say things like, you know, you know who I don't like? That Kelly Clarkson, she's filthy. Always showing her midriff and such. He gave me spare keys to the restaurant just in case the rapture happened and my Jew ass was the only one left behind. <laughs> He never called me Michael. My name is Michael. He always called me Mackle. Hey, Mackle. Which makes me think that his favorite fat liberal documentarian is the same as his favorite Seattle-based rapper, Macklemore. Uh, and it was rough. People, people always ask me this. They're like, what's the worst day you ever worked in your seven and a half years of fast food? And the honest answer is all of them. But... <laughs> I narrowed it down to a couple. One was, uh, there was a white woman who wouldn't leave the drive through because we gave her daughter a black Barbie doll. Now, I know I already said Florida, but this took place in Florida. Uh, <laughs> she is now Secretary of Education. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this was every, every year, once a day, I had to clean every ball in the ball pit, oh. one by one, <laughs> while just humming tunes from the Les Miserables soundtrack to myself. <laughs> there is a castle on a farm. <laughs> but, the, but the worst day ever, it was uh, a day like any other. I was in the drive-thru, it was 9.30 in the morning. I hear my manager pee and he's like, Mackle, you got a phone call. And I'm on headset taking orders. I answer the phone, it's my mom, and she's like, Grandma's gone for good. And I start to cry, and literally the next thing I hear after that is someone going, Yeah, I said two bacon, egg, cheese, biscuits, please. <laughs> so it was a lot for me to emotionally digest. I'm sure it was a lot for that customer to physically digest. <laughs> I take, take the order, you know, I, I have to get my mom off the phone quickly, so now two family members have said goodbye to her abruptly. Uh, not a good day for her. And I go up to Pete, and I'm like, hey Pete, I gotta go home, I gotta be there for my family. My grandma passed away, and he just goes, well, Mackle, how, how old was she? And I was like, she was 87 years old and he goes well come on that's not that sad <laughs> and the truth is part of me wanted to argue with him all of me wanted to punch him in the face but the reality was this was a guy who'd been a manager of a fast food restaurant for 16 years 
and had his master's degree in business hanging in his office. So if anyone was an expert on sadness, it was this guy. <laughs> I think it's what he minored in. Uh, <laughs> and I worked the rest of the shift. I worked the rest of the shift knowing my grandma was gone and my family needed me. Uh, none of the meals served that day were happy. Uh, <laughs> Luckily, I was wearing my darkest purple uniform, so the tears blended in with the grease. And <laughs> it's a sad story, guys. Sorry. <laughs> and then, um, and then it, it was rough, like trying to like deal with this, but then also the the bullshit of customers. Like there was a person who was like, "I want my rib sandwich," and I'm like, "They were only for a limited time," <laughs> just like my grandma was. <laughs> And I realized that that was the day that I stopped fighting. That was the day that, that I should have quit. And I felt like my grandma, she had given up and, and I had given up too. And I told myself that I was going to let her inspire me. And so a couple months later, I got an inheritance from her of a couple thousand dollars. And I said, I'm going to do what I always wanted to do and use the gruffness that she instilled in me to pursue stand-up comedy, and I quit that job. I moved to New York City, and I'll always remember the last day that I was there, I put my visor down the way an enemy would put a flower at someone's grave. <laughs> and Pete put his arm on my shoulder, and he said, just so you know, Mackle, when it doesn't work out in New York, you're always welcome back here. And I looked him in the eyes, and I said, don't you ever fucking threaten me like that again. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Mike Lawrence, everybody. Mike Lawrence.